Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie back in Tokyo. <laughs> I did some traveling this weekend. And this is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. I shouldn't even unpack my suitcase because I'm going to be leaving again in less than 48 hours. Uh, it's kind of get, getting a little bit of a crazy month going on here. I want to talk about XRP. Why? Because I think that hands down, it is the most exciting project in this space. And I want to explain why. So first, I'm going to start with the San Francisco Blockchain Week. This is uh, an event that started on October 28th and runs through today in San Francisco. They had a lot of high profile speakers. Vitalik was there. Mike Novogratz was there. And thanks to Bank XRP, we have this fireside chat with Michael Arrington as he spoke with Chris Larson. It's a 22 minute long interview chat and it's yeah it's very good because you can see that Arrington if you want to talk baseball language here he loves to throw spitballs and even these spitballs Chris took the junk and hit them all with perfect placement I want to show you one thing that's kind of interesting if I go to the actual blockchain week website you can see that the sponsors in the bronze section uh included ripple and spring but in the gold section look at this libra and the calibra wallet kind of interesting huh all right so uh we all know that the world is not going to be dominated by one single blockchain and as chris says that everybody understands that there's going to be many 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 blockchain initiatives but ilp Interledger protocol is what can wire all the world's ledgers and currencies together. And that is the vision. And we need this internet of value, putting them all on the ILP. And then of course, using XRP as on-demand liquidity so that those balances of fiat don't have to be sitting around the world parked in an effort to settle cross-border remittances. And Soon after the conversation started to uh, get off the ground here, Chris talked about something that is very dear to his heart, and that is trying to defend children from online sexual abuse material. And I found it quite interesting because he is a strong privacy advocate and he says, of course, we need privacy, but, uh, you know, with these types of, um, uh, he gave a lot of kudos to Zuko, who it created Zcash. But when we have uh, these privacy coins and also like the Tor browser, which protects against any tracking, surveillance or censorship, uh, there has become an explosion of this material. And it really is something that he feels we need to um, fight against. And one of the one of the technologies that is fighting the good fight here is uh, Chain Analysis, who is a company that Ripple invested in, and they're catching those people who are sharing this material. So the big question is: is how do we maintain privacy? and also stop this kind of abuse. And Chris feels that we have the brains to solve this. Now, if you're interested in this chain analysis technology, uh, this is a very, very good podcast with the uh, chief strategy officer, Jonathan Levin, and he talks about how the law enforcement agencies around the world are using their mapping software to catch these bad actors. And Arrington, too, is a very strong libertarian and uh, is worried a little bit about some of these um, some of these efforts like Thorn, which Chris talked about in the chat, because, uh, yeah, he's, you know, being a libertarian, anytime someone tries to do too much uh, suppression of freedoms, uh, that always is like a warning flag, right? But he said, have a look at Thorne and do it with an open mind because he thinks they are doing good work. When you go to their website, you can see how can you take action? Well, just keep talking about it, listen to survivors, find a local organization, speak up and keep learning. I think that's really good advice. And one of the co-founders of Thorne, 
had a TED Talks just a couple of months ago. I'll put a link to it in the description below in case that is something that's interesting for you. I think that when you look at epic.org, which Chris Larson is also on the advisory board, along with David Chaum, who is behind Elixir, which I think is a really, really great project. Um, they are a public interest research center out of Washington, D.C., advocating privacy and freedom of expression. So again, this is uh, something that might uh, talk to you and you might be interested in. So just to give you a heads up that they are out there working on that. Okay, this is Emmy. Emmy, of course, is from Ripple and she works in the San Francisco office. But today she was in Japan working with the Thai community promoting SBI Remit. And this, of course, runs on Ripple. So I will show you here in this slide presentation that was given by uh, Mr. Kitao on the 30th, just a few days ago. SBI Remit is wholly owned by SBI Holdings. And you can see from the material here that it is a very, there's a very strong tie between SBI, MoneyGram, and Ripple. SBI is the largest outside shareholder of Ripple, and SBI Remit exceeded 750 billion yen as of September 2019. That's nearly 7 billion US dollars since they launched in 2010. And as the slide says, XRP is going to be used. And not only is it going to be used, but you can see here in the big red letters, and I'm sorry, I just can't uh, stop talking about this because SBI Ripple Asia is going to cover nearly 50% of the overall Ripple network once the connection is activated. So how much could go through that corridor should the yen Thai bot go live with XRP? If you're like me, I think you agree. It's, it's most likely going to happen. And I think it's going to be one of the new corridors in Q4. We'll see. But I, and you know I don't speculate too much. But I am speculating on this one. So when they did the case study, there was 10 billion in monthly cumulative payments with the volume of uh, Japanese yen. 10 billion is about 92 million US dollars a month. It's a big corridor. And, you know, we don't have to look far when we can compare. Here is the Bitso XRP Mexican peso. Now, it had a really great, almost, yeah, it had a great new high again on the 2nd of November, just a hair below 4 million. But when you, <laughs> yeah, it's it's good volume and it's growing. We, we don't see the finish of this candle yet because it's not quite done. But remember, this is only 10% of MoneyGram's volume, daily volume running right now. So take, Take this amount when they ramp up to their 100% volume, and then you add these new quarters that are coming on in Q4. I don't know how you can not say that XRP is the most exciting project in this space. I, I just, yeah, I, I just am getting kind of mm, a little bit, uh, um, what's the word? When I hear people complain about the price, I think that they really didn't have a, a, a real good idea how long it takes to actually rewire the financial world. But Ripple, the company, has not faltered in their vision and they, and they have not uh, become um, stuck you know, and or they haven't fallen off a cliff like so many of the uh, others in the tune of 99% of those other projects that have just either become stagnated or totally gone. Yeah, so I'm sorry that if you can't wait, well, gosh, I don't have any words other than this, then you should probably find another project because uh, this is moving in the right direction and i think it's getting to a point where it's um 
incredibly exciting. Truly, I do. All right, I am going to tell you about something that will be important for everybody, even if you can't come to the XRP meetup in Japan. This is uh, going to be broadcasted live, and it's going to be probably um, when David and some of the other Ripple people that are coming take the stage. That is what the information is being said. I don't have the entire details. I don't know how long the presentation or lecture is going to be, but a portion of this is going to be broadcasted live. And you can see here that on a website that talks a little bit about it, uh, they're going to do it in coordination with CoinPost. And there are uh, numerous lectures planned, plenty of surprises, and a photo booth because they're really restricting the photos and video from the venue. Uh, so I think, uh, yeah, it's going to be really great that everybody around the world can see a little bit of this uh, very exciting time that's going to take place on the 10th of November. So for the West, it's going to be on your Saturday the 9th. And this is CoinPost. This is their YouTube page. If you subscribe to them, um, they're going to use the YouTube channel to um, uh, do the live. So definitely uh, subscribe and hit that bell so you can get notified. Okay, everybody, we are jumping to the fluff. And today is Monday, Bunka no He, Culture Day. It's a national holiday. And this day has a purpose to promote culture, the arts, and the academic endeavors. Many prefectures hold events that parade in Edo period costumes commemorating when the feudal lords paraded through Edo. And this is uh, a picture kind of depicting that parade that used to take place. And it is dating this this is about the 1700s. Well, today, uh, there's also going to be some awards given. This is the Order of Culture, and it is a, a, an award given to men and women who've made achievements uh, or contributions to the arts, literature, science, technology, really anything related to culture in general. And the emperor presents this award. Interesting little tidbit of info is that the Apollo 11 astronauts also were awarded this medal. But here you can see this is an example of one of the um, parades that take place in Hakone, which is just about an hour and a half from Tokyo. It's famous, it's colorful, and it's a popular one. So if you plan your trip to Japan sometime in this part of the year, it is also <laughs> The 3rd of November, historically, is the uh, sunniest, driest day of the year. So it's kind of that perfect, perfect time. The weather is just fabulous. Someone someone is actually here from the XRP community. And I won't tell you who because I haven't okayed it with her that I tell you. But I'm going to probably have um, dinner with her tomorrow night. And we'll see if we can get a picture out there on Twitter. So this is the last picture I just wanted to leave you with because it, it made me smile. This is a reenactment of the profession or the procession parade with cats. <laughs> I'd pay big money to have this set. And look at this uh, group of cats in the back carrying tuna. <laughs> oh, it makes me smile. Makes me smile. Okay, everybody, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.